Christ is born. Let us glorify him. Amen. So tonight, again, we should be reminded those who have wondered at some level whether God loves them or not. There's no need anymore in any way to ever doubt that God loves them. I, I know that sometimes that's hard for people because they're thinking, well, you know, I'm a flawed human being, and I know my problems, and I know my sins. How could God possibly love me? Uh, I, it, that doesn't make sense. And if God is perfect, then it means that God's missing something, and that makes me kind of nervous. And then the very fact that what if I'm not really worthy of this love, that makes me nervous. But I want to assure Anyone who happens to have those kinds of fears, if you're concerned about being unworthy of the love of God, tonight I will tell you, you are unworthy. Amen. <laughs> so you feel encouraged? Um, actually, it's a great, great source of encouragement because when people think in some ways that they have something to do with the love of God, what happens if you blow it, and you think, oh my goodness, God's mad at me. Oh, or, or he's, not going to, he's not going to be blessing me the way he would have if I was just so much more what I should be. And so and here, I, here I am, I'm blowing it. And so what is God thinking? Is he kind of like, you know, wringing his hands and shaking his head and thinking, there he, she goes again. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Uh, no. Here's how you can know absolutely that you are perfectly loved by God, that you are zealously loved by God with great fervor, that this love that God has is unconditional and strong, and how that it's passionate and it's true, and you can count on the love of God no matter, no matter what you do or don't do. Because God is not loving. God himself is love. He's love and you can kick him and he's still love. You can swear at him, he's still love and he still loves you just as much as, you, as he ever did before. You can commit sins uh, over and over again. It doesn't phase him at all because it's not based on you. It's based on himself. He who is love is not going to stop loving you. And you know how sometimes the expression is, well, I just can't help but loving him. It's not quite true for God. He could help it, but then he couldn't because the very nature of God himself is love. So that's it. In, this, in essence, an essential love. Therefore, you never have to worry about whether God is going to let up loving you because it's not about you. I mean, and then again, he would say, it is about you because I made you in my image and likeness because I created you from love. Paul talks about there was a time when there was no matter, nothing at all. He says, before the foundations of the world, God saw you in his heart, in his heart of hearts. He loved you before you came into existence. So how can you possibly think that in any way that you could merit love when you did not even exist yet. But it does come from the heart of God. And so sometimes people are thinking, oh, well, I don't know if that's real love. Believe me, it's more love than you could ever imagine. In fact, it is something you can't imagine. And the reason that sometimes people get caught up is they're trying to figure out the love of God. And the reality is the angels can't figure it out, and they've been around for eons. <laughs> They say, I mean, uh, it is even recounted by Peter that, you know, they want to get close to figure this out. They wonder about what God has done in Jesus Christ when the Son of God became man. It's such a powerful and perfect image of who God is. And that's the thing, you see, when you look at Jesus Christ, God just explained himself. He explained how much he loves every human being. Because when Jesus came into the earth, he comes 
for the express purpose of persuading people by his presence, not by his speech, by his manner, not by certain wisdom or parables or proverbs, by the demonstration of how he lived his life, he comes to illustrate and exegete who God the Father is so that no one would ever have to wonder about the love of God. So if we would receive this, not with our head, because forget it, that's never going to happen. If we'd receive this with our heart, it would make a huge difference because can you imagine yourself being convinced in your heart that the perfect, infinite God, who not only created you and loved to create you, not only created everything, but that his heart towards you is soft and strong. His heart towards you is to bless, to bless so profoundly. And this is the truth. I'm not, not being dramatic. In fact, it's hard to be dramatic when you talk about the love of God. But where he loves you so much, seriously, he wants to give you everything that he is. He wants you to experience the, the goodness of his love. I mean, we, we, let me put it this way. Everything about God is infinite, right? So he is infinite in wisdom. His power is infinite. He can create from nothing. His love is infinite, too. So he, and, and the point is, he doesn't love us just once. It's not he loved you when he sent his son. No. He loved you when Jesus himself is on the cross. No. God is constantly loving every human being that he's created with the fullness of the kind of love you see in the incarnation and on the cross and by the Holy Spirit. He's constantly, personally, giving himself and gifting the fullness of himself to us. And if we would only stop trying to think about it and open our hearts, we would get a revelation of that love. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants to tell us tonight. Amen. Stop trying to figure it out because that's the wrong way. Because you cannot understand love with your thoughts. And you just don't have the ability, especially with infinite love. So, you know how when like two people might, you know, love each other, they have strong feelings toward one another, and maybe the man is considering proposing to the, to the woman, but he's kind of nervous, but he's not really sure whether the woman would love him enough to marry him. So he has these strong feelings, but he's saying, I think, you know, it comes to a point where the love is so strong, he doesn't even really care I mean, he does care, but he's willing to take the risk to propose even though he might be rejected. He hopes he will not be rejected, of course, because he loves her so much. But there comes a point where the love has to be greater than his fear. And so he proposes, but there was something about that. So at that moment, he's very vulnerable. He's saying to the woman, my whole life is going to be yours. I'm going to share all that what I am financially. I am going to be willing to have a house with you and spend the rest of my natural years with you day after day in the same, same house. And we're going to have children together. I'm saying that is I'm going to propose to you. That's what all that means. I'm going to be committed to you for the rest of my life. That's what that means in that proposal. And I'm laying my whole heart out before you. And then she says, yes. And then his heart is just elated, and so is hers because she was waiting for him to make that profession of commitment where he was not marrying her just for his sake, but for her sake as well, knowing that she would be blessed if she would marry someone like him. Well, what we have to understand is that God is, was, made himself vulnerable to you and I, and still does even this night. He's saying, I have conquered demons for you. I have contested with great suffering because of you. I was willing to give up all that I am. So there's the Son of God who deserved and received the worship of angels and was glorified rightly as God. And the Son of God says, 
with, with the Father and the Son, they all share the same will and desire, says, I am going to come and rescue them by my love. Even if they reject me. And of course, in his infinite wisdom, he knows he's going to be rejected. And he knows the nature of the rejection will be more profound than any jilted lover ever, ever, ever experienced or could imagine of experiencing. But still, he makes himself vulnerable. And so he's, he shows us that he comes as an infant for our sake. And we know what the story is, that he will die for us, he'll rise, he'll ascend and give his Holy Spirit. But all of that is a proposal. He's saying, you know those things, but I'm not asking you to believe those things. He's saying, I'm asking you to love me. I'm not asking you to have right doctrine in every single instance. I'm asking you to love me back because I love you. And I've come that you might experience my love. And so the decision tonight is not a decision. It's will we be vulnerable? Will we be willing to deal with our own fears and say, Lord, you have proposed brilliantly and profoundly that that in the depths of love that no man could ever demonstrate or explain to any woman at any time. And you've made yourself the most vulnerable being, though you be God. No one is more vulnerable than you. And now you've made yourself vulnerable. You made it really clear. You are committed. And so now our hearts are saying, God, if you love like that, how can I not love you back? What could I love more than loving you? What could I give my heart to that we could possibly be greater than you? How could I be more invested in anything but you? Because, Lord, you loved in a way that is perfect and profound. In fact, it comes from your very nature. You who are love have demonstrated that love to me. And so, I'm going to pray for the Spirit of God to use some of these words. Those words are only symbols of a deeper idea, but to use some of these words to prick your heart, all of us, to give our love to him yet more in response. Because that is what he asks. And he asks not so that we give him our share back, but he asks so that he can love us some more and we'll know that. Love us in some more, and not in the sense of no more quantity, but it will become more alive to our experience. That we will know this in a deeper way because we said yes. Just like that woman might have missed out the love of her, of her genuine lover if she said, no, I don't think so. I'm too afraid of marriage. She would have missed so much, but still, that man still would have loved her. God is like that to an infinite degree. So although it's hard for us to, to imagine God Almighty to be vulnerable and open and just be love itself, we have to because he brought everything into existence by love. And really, even the kind of love that we have some sense of comes from him, but his is so much more perfect. And so he addresses our hearts tonight. Holy Spirit, I pray that you come on all of our hearts and that you would help us not to view you just as a doctrine, not just to view you as a truth, but that there'd be a part of us that would say yes to your love in a way we never did before. We were afraid, but now we're saying, God, you're the one who was vulnerable and you put everything on the line. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you awaken in us a wisdom and a discernment that's greater than anything could ever be understood on this earth, that through a measure of the kingdom of God would break open in our hearts and we would understand in a way we could never understand before that we are loved by God. We are loved in all the power and might that God is and that he himself just wants to give himself to us. And the way he does is we let him by saying yes in our heart of hearts. Spirit of God, help us to be pricked in our inner being to know this is true. That very part of us that was created in the image and likeness of God, that there be something about that that would ignite 
and say, yes, that's true. There is something deeper than I understand here, and my heart says yes to it. Holy Spirit, help everyone say a deeper yes today than they've ever said before. Lord, you are worthy. Thank you for your great love for us. Christ is born. Let us glorify him. Amen.